All right, math three graphing radical equations. So um, we'll start with number two because that's the parent graph and kind of everything's built off that. But this is one where it's really easy to just graph using electronic means. Um, so I would suggest that too. But on the homework, we're only doing one through six, the first page. So square root of x starts at zero, zero, then one, one, four, two, because square root of four is two, and nine, it would be like right there, and it looks like this. Also, we need to write the domain, the range, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept, if any. So that's the basic function of the um, square root. So using that transformational knowledge, if there's something on the inside, it's going to move it right or left. If there's something added or subtract on the outside, up or down, and out front is going to do a vertical or horizontal stretch and reflection if it's negative. Okay, so our domain, well, we start at zero and we're going to positive infinity, right? Starting here, domain goes to positive infinity. For our range, start here at zero and it's just going to keep going up, so again, zero to positive infinity. And the x and the y intercepts are the same. They're the origin, 0, 0. Okay? So if we look at number 1, first thing we should know, thinking about that parent graph, is that we've got to subtract 2. So we're going to shift everything to the right 2. Okay? So we would start here at 2, 0. So x intercept is going to be Two zero, y intercept. There's none. Okay, then this three fourths. What it's going to do is actually um, cut it by a fourth, basically. So instead of one one, it would be one and three fourths. Right there. And then out four, uh, three fourths of two. We look right there. So it's going to cut it a little bit. Okay, so, but the range is going to stay the same, 0 to infinity, and the domain will just have shifted over to 2 to infinity. But like I said, graph these electronically, and that'll help out. Okay, now if we look at number 4, we've got that vertical movement, so instead of starting right there, we're going to start up here, but we follow that same trend. And it's going to look like that. So, the domain here is the same as the original, 0 to infinity. Okay, the range, we start at 3, but then it goes to positive infinity. The x, there is none, and there's now just a y-intercept at 0, 3. Now 3, we're going to shift twice, aren't we? We're going to go to the right one and down one. So we start right there. But then, just like when we go back up here, from that starting point, we go to the right one and up one. Okay, so we start down here, go to the right one, up one, so it's going to go right there. And then we go over four and up two from our original, so over four and up two. So right there. So then we draw it like that. So again, um, there's no y-intercept. X-intercept is 2, 0. The domain, we shifted over and started at 1 to positive infinity. The range, we moved down to negative 1 to positive infinity. And there's number 3. Okay, number 4, we're just shifting to the left because it's opposite. So we, instead of starting at 0, we're going to start at negative 5. Okay. And then to the right 1, up 1. And then to the right 4, up 2. We could go to the right 9 and up 3, because that's the next one in line. So domain would be negative 5 to infinity. Range stayed the same, 0 to infinity. Um, there is an x-intercept at negative 5, 0, and there is a y-intercept. We'll have to figure it out, so the 
y value would be 0 equals square root of x plus 5. So to find out what this y-intercept is, because it's harder to see, we would just square both sides. So 0 would equal x plus 5. Wait, x is 0, not y is 0, huh? So it would be y equals square root of 0 plus 5. So it would end up being y equals square root of 5, which you could just write square root of 5, but you may need to get a calculator. Go square root of 5, and it's about 2.24. So it would be 0, 2.24 for our y-intercept. Okay. All right, now number 6. So this plus 1, we'd shift it to the left one. Now this 1 half means normally we went to the, right on the parent function, we went to the right 1 and up 1, to the right 4 and up 2, to the right 9 and up 3. But instead, when we go to the right 1, we're only going to go up a half. When we go to the right 4, we only go up half of 2, which is 1. And when we went, go to the right 9, instead of 3, we'd go up 1.5. So it just kind of has that horizontal stretch going on here. And so our domain, we'd start off at negative 1 to infinity. Our range, we stayed at 0, so 0 to infinity. We have an x-intercept at negative 1, 0. And then we have a y-intercept, and we know this one, it's 0, 1 half. And that's pretty much all you guys needed to do, but I will do these ones on the back just to, to show you how that'll change. Okay? Now, 7, we got a lot going on, so first let's do 8. I like 8 better. Let's, we'll come back to 7. So, actually, let's, yeah, let's do 10 and 9 first. So this one will just go down 3, so we start going down 3, and then it has the same other points. So our domain is still 0 to infinity. Our range dropped down to negative 3 to infinity. Our x-intercept will be further on. Our y-intercept will be 0, negative 3. Now, to find the x-intercept, we'd make the y equal to 0. So, I would add 3. So 3 equals square root of x, so we square it, so I get 9 equals x. So 9, 0 would be our x-intercept. Okay, number 9, we just have a shift to the left, 2, so it starts right here. Everything else is the same. It'd look like that. Domain would be... Negative 2 to infinity. Range would be still 0 to infinity. X would be negative 2, 0. And Y would be... So the Y-intercept we would have to... Did we already do this one? No, we didn't. Seems similar. So if X were 0, it would have Y equals 0 plus 2, so square root of 2. So square root of 2, which is like 1.7, so it would be 0 like 1.7. Pretty sure square root of 2 is like 1.7. Better check that. The calculator. Oh, 1.4. Sorry. Thought I was off. 1.41. All right. Now, if we look at number 8, so we're going to go down 1, and then we're going to double it. So we start off going down 1, as we go to the right, instead of going up 1, we go up 2. As we go to the right 4, instead of up 2, we go up 4. So it's just kind of got a vertical stretch. But it doesn't really change much. Domain is still 0 to infinity. Range jumped down 1. So it is negative 1 to infinity. The x-intercept, we'll check in a second, y-intercept would be 0, negative 1. To find the x-intercept, we'd make the y equal to 0, and then solve. So I'd add 1. And if I did this electronically, it'd be a lot easier to find these numbers. So 1 half equals square root of x. So we square both sides. 1 half squared is 1 squared over 2 squared, so 1 fourth. 
So it would be one fourth zero. Okay. Now number seven, we're going to go down four and to the right two for our starting. And then instead of over one and up one, we're going to go over one and up five. And then instead of over four and up two, we're going to go over four and up ten. So that one has a very high arc here. So domain, we shifted over to 2, so 2 to infinity. Range shifted down to 4, so negative 4 to infinity. X-intercept, we'll check. Y-intercept, there is none. So X-intercept, we'd make Y equal to 0. We'd add 4. 4 equals 5 square roots of X minus 2 divided by 5. 4 fifths equals square root of x minus 2, square that, be 16 25ths, because that's how you square fractions, x minus 2, oh, let's get rid of that square root, just x minus 2, and then add 2, so 16 25ths plus 2, so here's where I just use the calculator, because the decimal's pretty easy, so 16 divided by 25, equals 0.64 plus 2 gives us 2.64 so 2.64 0 alright now the last two are actually cubic and the parent graph of a cubic has the origin and it looks a lot like um, the other one but 8 would actually go up to 2 so you'd still have 1 1 but then you'd go 8 2 but then it goes in the negative, that reflection. So it looks like that. Okay? But we think of these points here when we think of the ones that will be shifting. Okay? So I'll, I'll draw the parent ones in the darker blue so we can kind of get a feel for it. Okay, so this first one we're going to shift it to the left 3 and up 1. So my first one, I shift to the left 3 and up 1. So there's my middle. To the left 3, up 1. This point to the left 3, up 1. And this point to the left 3, up 1. And so it looks something like that instead. Okay, now our domain here and our range are both going to go from negative infinity positive infinity, okay, our x and y intercepts are a little bit tougher to find, so y intercept, 0 equals square root of 3, x plus 3 plus 1, subtract 1, negative 1 equals cube root of x plus 3, cube it, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, equals x plus 3, minus 3, we get negative 4 equals x. So x-intercept of negative 4, 0, which I should have guessed because it was right there. For y-intercept, make the x 0, so cube root of 0 plus 3 would be 3 plus 1. So in the cube root of 3, I'd have to use a calculator for this. So 3 cube root is like 1.44 plus 1. It's about 2.44. So y-intercept, 0, 2.44. Okay, then for 12, clear some space here. So same idea, the difference is we would move up to, so everything is going to shift up to, so let's start with the 0, 0, and shift it up to, then we're going to double it. So instead of over to the right one, up one, we go to the right one, up two, to the left one, down two. Okay, so there's our x-intercept negative 1, 0. Our y-intercept we know is 2, 0. Okay, domain and range are going to be the same because it doesn't really change. So it would be negative infinity to infinity. Okay, then here we would shift it would uh, go out to 8. Um, so we'd bump it up to, but instead 
we're going to actually double it. So we start up here, and then instead of going down two, we go down four, so it's actually in the same spot. And this one, instead of up two to right here, it'd go up four to right there. So we get this. All right. And there's my graph, there's my information, and there's the whole thing.